Hi, I'm Seben Yakov. The title of this presentation is Boost Converter Step Up. It describes the operation of the switch mode boost converter. The basic configuration of the boost circuit is shown here and includes, of course, the primary input power, which will be a voltage source, an inductor L of some inductance. We have a switch here, which is turned on and off, on and off at high frequency. Now the switch, of course, in practical circuits will be implemented by a semiconductor, say by a um, MOSFET transistor that is controlled here to turn it on and off at a certain frequency and a certain duty cycle. What is a duty cycle? If we have a period of T, then we have some time on and then off, and this will be on. And so this is, will be the T on, the time that the switch is on, and therefore T on over the period is defined as the duty cycle, or T on if you want. Now, we then have a diode, which is used to uh, pass the current this way and block the current the other way. We have a capacitor, which is a filter capacitor, the purpose of which is to sort of attenuate the ripple on the voltage that will be developing at the output. And we have a resistor, which actually represents the load, could be a smartphone or any other uh, device. So what is happening here is that we have a switch, which is turning on and off, shorting, you might say, the inductor to ground, then releasing it, and then current passing through the dial. Let's have a closer look at the modes of operation which are shown here. It is divided to the on time and off time. On with respect to the switch. When the switch is conducting, we call it the on time. When the switch is non-conducting, we call it the off time. During the on time, the inductor is actually connected in parallel to the input voltage, and therefore there is a constant voltage imposed on it. And since we have the equation that states that the IDT, that is the rate of rise of the current, is V over L, and since V is constant, L is constant, therefore the current will go straight line increasing. Here is the voltage imposed on the inductor, and this is the current going up. At this point, the switch is turned off, that is, it is disconnected. There's an open circuit here. So what will happen? Well, there's a current flowing through the inductor. We are interrupting the current. And the same equation says that V is L. This is the state space equation. V is equal to L times the IDT. And since we are interrupting the current in a very short time, this DIDT is very high. This is a very quick change. Therefore, we'd expect a high voltage. That is, a high voltage will develop here. The question is, what's the polarity of the voltage? Okay, there is a very simple way to find it out. We put an imaginary resistor here. And since the current is sort of looking away to pass, here is the way that it'll, it'll go. It's the continuity of the current. And we then understand that since the current is going through the in, a resistor in the way in, in this direction, that we'll have here plus and minus polarities of the voltage. So the voltage will start going up very quickly becoming more and more positive. Until, until what? Until it'll be higher, the voltage here, 
then V out. Remember, we have here a diode, and that's actually the purpose of the diode. Once the voltage here is higher than V out, the diode will start conducting. And this will bring us to this state in which the switch is off, current is flowing, and uh, the diode, which is not shown here, is passing the current. Now, in this case, the voltage imposed on the inductor is also constant. It's the difference between V in and V out. Now, V out is higher than V in. Why is that? We'll discuss it in a minute. Let's just assume that this is the case. Just trust me. So, V out is higher than V in, and consequently, the voltage on this side now is higher than the voltage on this side. That is, this is now the polarity of the voltage across the inductor, as opposed to the previous case in which uh, we had only V in connected to the inductor, in this case, and therefore the polarity was reversed. So we have a reverse polarity here, and consequently, the voltage is negative, of course, here, and, and therefore the, the IDT is negative, and the current now is going down. In steady state, this will be sort of one cycle. It will go on and on, and in steady state, this voltage, this current should be equal to this current. If we assume that we are in steady state position, uh, situation in which the current is not sort of drifting up or down all the time. Now, I just said that V out is indeed higher than V in. Well, let's understand is why this is the case when the uh, boost is in a stable operation. If we look at the voltage at Vx, what we are going to see is something of this nature. Here is the period. During the time that the switch is on, this time here, the time, the voltage is zero because the switch is sort of shorting the axe to ground. Then the switch is released, turned off, current is passing through here and neglecting the voltage drop uh, on the diode. We are going to see here, we're going to see V out. So we're going to jump to V out for the rest of the time. This will be T off. So this is, we call it T on, and this is T off. Now, if we assume that the inductor is in steady state, that is, there is no continuous drip of a average current up or down, this necessitates the a situation of a zero average voltage on the inductor. Because the average voltage on the inductor is causing the average drift of the inductor, and therefore only when the average voltage is zero, then the average drift is zero. That is what I'm saying is that if you look at the averages, that is the average change of current is equal to the average voltage times inductance. So if you assume that on the average, that is over many cycles, this term here is zero, this requires that the average of the voltage will be zero. Now, if I look at the voltage on this side, the average voltage, of course, is V in because it's a constant voltage. This is time and this is V in. Now, if I look at Vx, what I see is this picture we just talked about. Now, in steady state, the average of this picture, of this waveform, must be equal to V in. Now, when you 
Take the average, that is, you take the area and divide it by the period, you'll end up with a value something like this. Say. So this would be V in, which implies that this voltage here, which is V out, must be higher than V in. Otherwise, there'd be no way to equalize these two averages. This implies that the boost is a step-up converter that is useful when you want to uh, get voltages which are, which are higher than V in. Now, what about the expression for V out over V in, that is, the voltage gain? Now, there are two ways to uh, do the calculation here. I'm going to use, first of all, the concept of an average voltage zero on the inductor. So we already know that the average voltage on this side is V in. The average voltage on this side can be calculated from this waveform in which this is the period. This is the time that the transistor or the switch is off and this is the height of V out. We just spoke about it. The average will be V out times T off divided <coughs> by TS, shown here. And when I compare this expression to V in, I can get the expression for V out over V in, which is 1 over D off. What does it mean? It means that when the duty cycle, the on, that is the time that the transistor is on, is very short, very short, then the off is very large. Uh, the, the simple relationship between the two, the off is one minus the on. So when the on is, is short, the off is large, the gain is low. When the on is very large, approaching one, cannot be more than one, approaching one, then the off will be small, say 0.1, and then V out to V in will be large, like 10 times in this case. Okay? So here is the expression for the voltage gain of this uh, stage. Another way to do the calculation is the so-called delta I method, in which we do the following. We know that the current in the inductor is going up, and then it's going down. Now looking at the two triangles here, we can calculate delta I from this side, and then delta I from this side. We can calculate it because we know T on. We know the slope here. Slope here is V in over L. Slope here is minus V out minus V in over L. And therefore, we can calculate this height and this height and equate the two. This is one side. This is another side, the other side. And then after simple manipulation, you obviously get the same number if you didn't do any mistake. Now let's move to a variation of the boost converter, which is the buck boost, uh, which is a very interesting uh, converter. In fact, it is a precursor of the so-called flyback uh, converter, which I'm not going to discuss here, uh, which is very, very, very useful, very popular because it provides insulation. But let's concentrate on the back boost. As it says here, this is a step up and step down con converter. That is, you can get voltages which are higher or lower than <coughs> uh, the input voltage. Now, how does it work? When the switch is on, current is flowing this direction, charging the inductor, and when the switch is off, this current finds the path, 
this way and then flowing through the output section. Now notice that this is this direction of the current, consequently the voltage here is in this polarity, so this particular converter is inverting the polarity of the voltage. So if you have a positive voltage at the input, you have a negative voltage at the output. Okay, now what about the transfer ratio of uh, this inductor? If we look at this point Vx, what are we going to see? During the on time, this time, this will be off. During the on time, we're going to see V in. During the off time, we're going to see V out, actually minus V out. Now, for the average voltage to be zero, this area must be equal to this area. So, V in times T on must be equal to minus V out times T off. We'll first divide it by T the period, so we'll get V in times V on minus V out times V off, or write it here, V out over V in is minus D on over D off. Now, since we have a ratio of the two duty cycles, then when the duty cycles are, say, 0.5, D on will be 0.5 and D off will be 0.5, the gain will be 1, and, uh, of course, with a uh, reverse polarity. But if D on is smaller than half, than 0.5, D off will be bigger than be a lower voltage, and vice versa. So this is a very uh, neat converter that you can adjust the uh, voltages. However, in this particular configuration shown here, the um, polarity is reversed. This actually brings me to the uh, end of this uh, presentation. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I hope you'll find uh, the presentation useful. Thank you.